nuclear attack submarine USS Scorpion, SSN 589, has been reported overdue at Norfolk. The submarine was scheduled to return to Norfolk at 1 p.m. today at the conclusion of a routine extended training operation with an all-out air surface and subsurface search is currently underway in the entire Atlantic Command. Scorpion, with her crew of 99 officers and men, had simply vanished in the vastness of the Atlantic. Among the searchers is a submariner who had transferred off the Scorpion just months before. I think deep inside that I knew it was futile. I think I really knew that there was no purpose in it. We had, we had found out, you know, how long it had been since their, their last communication. And uh, just <laughs> figured something had to have happened. I don't, you know. Yeah, yeah, hope, hope springs eternal, right? Uh, give me a minute, will you? After 10 days, the Navy declares the boat and all hands lost and presumed dead. It isn't until months after Scorpion's memorial service that the remains of the submarine are found. When they are, the Navy assures the public there's no evidence of hostile action. But the Navy will say no more. Whatever conclusions it reaches about the accident are classified. Scorpion lies 10,000 feet below the surface of the Atlantic. Bob Ballard uses this mini-sub to photograph the boat's remains in the mid-1980s. Unlike Thresher, Scorpion remains largely intact. She must have been partially flooded before she reached crush depth. This was Scorpion's tower, or sail, it was ripped completely off the boat. The extreme water pressure broke off the entire tail end of the sub and rammed it into the section in front of it, like a collapsing telescope. None of these images are released until 1993. That's when the Navy finally begins declassifying information about Scorpion. Starting in the 1960s, the U.S. military built a massive underwater network of microphones used to detect Russian fleet movements and nuclear tests. These microphones were the key to locating Scorpion's remains. I think in all, in the course of the Cold War, we spent about $17 billion. billion. I mean, we're not talking small change. Big money to wire the world's oceans with these microphones. They had the whole ocean wired for sound. It's really <laughs> kind of a cool thing. Technicians were trained to interpret squiggly lines like these as the distinct sounds of ships, whales, undersea volcanoes, and submarines. An unexplained underwater explosion is found by a team of specialists headed by Navy scientist John Craven. The Canary Island record showed a blip on the record, which might or might not have been associated with Scorpion, and then showed a period of 91 seconds of silence, and then a series of about 17 events that could have been the implosion of various compartments associated with the submarine. When the same pattern is found on recordings from two microphones in the ocean off Newfoundland, 3,000 miles away, it's possible to triangulate where the explosions occurred. But if they happened on Scorpion, there's a new mystery to solve. What we expected was that if the submarine were moving on a track, that the first sound would occur at this point, and that the next sound would come ahead of this point, heading more home toward Norfolk, and the third sound would come this way, heading more toward Norfolk, and so on and so forth. 
But we discovered to our shock and surprise that the sounds were going in the wrong direction, as though the submarine had turned around and was heading back toward the Mediterranean. Had Scorpion turned around? And if so, why? The Navy has a possible explanation, but keeps it secret for 25 years. Finally, in 1993, the Navy releases its findings. The most likely scenario, the Navy believes, begins when stray electrical current activates an onboard torpedo. The captain orders an immediate 180 degree turn, which he expects will trigger a safety mechanism and disarm the torpedo. Then, the crew ejects the torpedo. But it doesn't disarm. The torpedo begins to search for a target. If no one else is around, and that torpedo begins to search and acquire, it's going to acquire you. They probably knew what was happening because they would have heard it coming. And they were a bit faster than the torpedo, so they would have had a chance. And I would imagine that they tried to outrun it. But this scenario does not satisfy everyone. As a young Navy lieutenant, Ross Saxon examined the Scorpion wreckage in the Bathyscaphe Trieste. Now, I dove on the Scorpion, and I didn't see any evidence whatsoever that a torpedo sunk that ship. Uh, there wasn't anything on the, on the hull structure that we could see that would suggest that. The, tor the uh, shutter doors were shut on all the bow tubes. Uh, the submarine was broken up because of its trip to the bottom, but there wasn't any evidence that a torpedo sunk it. Dan Rogers doesn't believe the torpedo story either. He transferred off Scorpion just before her final voyage because he believed inadequate maintenance made the submarine unsafe. I really didn't want to be there. I was, I was really con that concerned about the condition of that boat, and the, especially the material condition of the boat. Eventually, Rogers shared his doubts with Steve Johnson, an investigative reporter for the Houston Chronicle. Johnson found letters from other crew members that showed they, too, were concerned about the mechanical condition of the sub. He tracked down Ross Saxon, whose doubts about the torpedo theory encouraged him to keep digging. Then, after years of effort, he unearthed a critical piece of Scorpion's past. I obtained several thousand pages uh, related to the Scorpion's maintenance history from the Atlantic Submarine Fleet. I had sent out half a dozen requests under the Freedom Information Act, and it just so happens they found these documents that they thought had been destroyed. Buried amid thousands of pages was the day-by-day -day history of how the Scorpion was selected in a secret program that drastically reduced the maintenance that it would have ordinarily received. To save time, the Navy had cut back on Scorpion's last overhaul. Scorpion was in the shipyard eight months, though an average overhaul took 24. They spent just $3 million, a fraction of the norm. The torpedo theory seems to be extremely convenient for the U.S. Navy because it tends to uh, detract from any other theory and also it, it, it tends to remove any kind of responsibility from the US Navy itself from any maintenance problems that may have contributed to the actual loss of the submarine yet another clue in the scorpion mystery has been uncovered by journalists Chris Drew and Sherry Sontag their research has revealed another disturbing Navy secret when the Navy released its version of events that the Scorpion had been killed by one of its own torpedoes. I was working at the Chicago Tribune. This was a huge front page story. As it turned out, one man who read it had been an engineer at a torpedo testing lab, and he remembered that they'd had all sorts of safety problems with the torpedoes. Now that it wasn't classified anymore, he wrote to John Craven to ask him how much of the conclusion that a torpedo was at fault had been based on 
all these safety problems they were having. And Craven was floored. Craven had led the scientific investigation into the Scorpion mystery, yet he had never been told of torpedo problems. In fact, naval ordnance had insisted the explosion of a torpedo on board was impossible. Craven shared this letter with Sontag and Drew, who immediately started digging into the story. They learned that in tests, the battery that powered the Mark 37 torpedo had occasionally overheated and caught fire. Engineers who had worked at this torpedo test facility in Keyport, Washington, said they had warned the fleet about a possible onboard explosion big enough to sink a submarine. From the moment the lab began to test these components, they warned naval ordnance that the batteries represented a huge danger. They said that there was no margin for error. They said that they could too easily partially activate and catch fire. Naval ordnance ignored them. I'm sorry, do you think people what? We spoke to a lot of people who are no longer in contact with one another, who were there during the fires when the alert was made and everything else, were very confident. We're not, we don't, we can't tell you that this is exactly what happened to Scorpion, but we can tell you this danger very definitely existed. Perhaps it was an exploding torpedo that took Scorpion down. Perhaps it was the failure of equipment that didn't get the attention it required. With no survivors, we'll never know for sure. But following the disaster, the Navy abandoned its reduced maintenance experiment and redesigned the Mark 37 torpedo. The U.S. Navy never lost another nuclear submarine.